So I've actually had this Mini for the last two years and it's taken me this long to realize that I haven't done a proper video on it. And this could very well be the very last chance I have to film with it. So if you've seen The Italian Job and that's the original from 1969, you'll have no doubt have fallen in love with the quirkiness and the size of the original minis. I've always loved the idea of owning the original Mini because it just looks like so much fun to drive. But because of the size and the fact that I'm so tall, it just seems like such an impractical thing for me to get. The reason I ended up with this Mini is by pure chance. I wasn't even looking to buy a new car, certainly not a Mini, but for about a week, I had this idea in my head that I wanted to create a Mini movie. And of course, pun intended, it involved the Mini. So I was watching The Italian Job pretty much every single day, three times a day for about a week. When I was driving past a mini dealership, I couldn't help but think to myself, I wonder what they're like to drive. So I went in, took this very one for a test drive and instantly fell in love. But I must admit, it's not really a mini, is it? Over the years, minis have been getting bigger and bigger in size and it's kind of forgotten the whole reason why the minis existed in the first place back in the 60s the fiat 500 was becoming extremely popular especially here in the uk but the head of bmc absolutely hated seeing them roaming the streets so he vowed to create a proper miniature car he insisted that the car should fit within a box no more than 10 feet by four feet. And that's tiny. The car was actually so small that new 10 inch tires actually had to be developed for it. Back then, the whole unique selling point of the Mini was the fact that it was a miniature car. That's where it got its name from. Fast forward to today and the Minis produced by BMW are far from Mini in everything apart from the name. While there are subtle touches as a nod to the original design, the modern minis of today are pretty much just a mini version of a BMW 1 Series. On the plus side, it still retains that distinctive shape of a mini. I mean, you could look at it from a distance and tell instantly that it's a mini, as long as you've seen the original. Despite its larger size, the BMW mini is still a lot of fun to drive. The steering certainly feels sharp and quick around the corners, and this is by far the most fun I have had driving down country lanes. Unfortunately, I have actually ended up with two speeding tickets as a result of driving this car. I must point out, it was on the M6 motorway doing a very long journey up to Manchester. It wasn't on res residential streets, so naughty naughty if that's one of you. I have to say that had this car actually had cruise control, which it doesn't, I probably wouldn't have got those speeding tickets because on long journeys, you can just flick it onto the cruise control and just leave it at 70 or 72-ish. When it comes to long journeys, something else that helps is the fact that this car is indeed a diesel. Now, I know that some of you will be wincing at that, but I absolutely love the fact that this Mini is a diesel. The last time I drove to the Nürburgring, I actually managed to average about 82 miles to the gallon which is pretty economical, especially since I was doing 131 miles an hour on the autobahn. I mean, if this car isn't economical, I don't know what is. Although, to be fair, there are probably some more economical cars, but yes, this is an economical car. To be honest though, it definitely sounds a bit like a tractor when it's idling, but as soon as you put your foot down, you kind of forget that it's a diesel. I mean, it, it's so much fun to drive, it's got a lot of torque, and you just feel that performance. Moving on to the interior, you can't help but fall in love with the lighting. You can change the color to suit any mood that you are currently in. So more often than not, it's pink because I love pink, but I also change it to red every now and then if I'm truly concentrating at night. I've mentioned earlier that the modern minis have become a lot larger and that is to make them much more practical. Despite the fact that I'm quite a tall person, I've still got plenty of headroom. The seats are fully adjustable and even with me in the driver's seat, I can still fit a 
person behind me, even though it might be a tight squeeze. The boots is pretty tiny, I have to say, but for the last year or so, I've actually had the rear seats down so that I can use my car to store tools and other bits for the MS Mini project I've been working on. So stay tuned for more updates on the MS Mini Mini. There's more to come on that. Of course, the downside to it being more spacious and more practical is the fact that it is pretty much the same size as any other hot hatch that you can get out there. Now, remember, the original unique selling point of the Mini and the whole reason why it existed in the first place was because it was small, it was compact, it was a miniature car. That's where it got its name from. But now, the BMW Mini is just a name. The Mini brand is just a name. Despite that, I still love this car. I must admit, out of all the cars that I have owned, this has definitely been the most fun. So I, I think I'm gonna miss it, but only a little bit. And you'll see why in the next video. So there we have it. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you have, hit the like button. If you haven't, you're welcome to press the dislike button, but please leave a comment so that I know what to do better for next time. And don't forget to subscribe for plenty more videos to come. In the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.